All over our cities, along our coastlines and across our green and pleasant land, an invisible army is fighting a never-ending war. Their enemy is the filth that we create and the vermin that thrive on it. Welcome to the hidden world of the Grime Fighters. On Grime Fighters tonight, extreme cleaners Dave and Graham dress up. <laughs> Grimsby Enforcement Officer John plays it tough. The various notices have been served on you, and this has now reached a point where it can no longer right. carry on. And pest controller Pete battles with some bed bugs. They can actually take seven times their own body weight of blood a night. In Leicester, council property manager Alex has been called to a flat after a tenant has left. He's got to make sure that it can be refurbished and back on the rental market as soon as possible. He's no idea what state the property's in. Been given the keys by the local office just to check, avoid property. Well, something don't smell too good. The awful smell isn't the only problem. The whole flat's an appalling mess. OK, it's a pretty bad one. Doesn't look like there's anywhere to sit, anywhere to sleep. So, I mean, I don't know how someone managed to live here, but obviously someone did. Next stop, what's supposed to be the bedroom. Right, um, more clothes. Doesn't look like he's got a bed anywhere. I think we had a smoker. Quite a few there, a bit of a mound of... Oh, ash. Oh, there's his bed. Can't see where he would have used it to sleep. Judging by what he's seen so far, Alex can't be confident about the bathroom. Um, first time I've come across a bath like this, don't know what he's been doing in there. Some kind of fish pet, maybe. Got a nice toilet with faeces stains in there. Don't really fancy touching that. The final room he looks at is the kitchen. Uh-oh. I think this is... Source of the smell, yeah. I think he liked his coffee with milk, I think. Lots of things growing in the milk. Never come across milk in that amount. I'm told never to open fridges, but never milk like that. Ugh. I don't want to get too close to that. A little bit queer there, but try and hold it in. Before Alex can decide what needs to be done, he has to know exactly what he's dealing with. Until it's actually clear and we've got like a blank canvas to work to. You can't really, it's hard to say what we need to do while it's full of stuff. So the priority is get it cleared, get it clean, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look then. Fortunately for Alex, it's not up to him to clear the flat. I think I've seen enough in here. Um, I think it's time to move on. One of the most cunning adversaries Britain's pest controllers face is the bed bug. They may be small, but their bites cause great discomfort. Trouble is, they live on human blood. Today, Dagenham Pest Controller Pete isn't going to have any nonsense from these vampires. All right, mate. Pest control. Pete is taken upstairs to the main bedroom where the tenants and their young baby have been sleeping. So, where was your main problem? Underneath the bed. Yep, the top. OK. Yep, along the seams. Just the natural places, yeah, yeah, yeah. where you're going to find them. As ever, Pete has a plan. What we're going to do, I'm going to collect them, as many as I can, mm -hmm. and then I'll come in, kit up, and then we'll spray the whole room, OK, okay for you. Okay. We'll crack on and see what we can get. Right, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate as many bed bugs as I can by collecting them with a bit of sellotape and putting them in a bag, then sending them away, being incinerated. First, we've got to find them. Pete needs to remove the mattress to take a closer look. And if you have a look here, you can actually see the actual blood spots where the bed bugs are being. As in any battle, it helps to know your enemy. The way they prey on people is through carbon dioxide. So when you're breathing out the carbon dioxide, that's how they transmit you and find you at, at, at night. So basically, this is the end of the bed. That is the head end of the bed. You're going to have more activity up the head, head end of the bed. Obviously where they're going to be hidden all in these slats here. Once we undone do some of these, you will see bed bugs in them. After the mattress has been removed, hey presto, got one of the blighters. So what I'm going to do is get a bit of sellotape now and collect these the best I can. And the easiest way is basically where they are, just literally put it on top of them 
and pick him up. Well, I've asked him how much he's been bit and he's, been, he's more the baby been bit more than anything, uh, which is obviously it's sweeter blood, believe it or not. The skin's softer, so they, they find it easier to penetrate to get the blood. Pete has decided to take direct action straight away. He doesn't want the bugs to live any longer than necessary. If you just spray them, it's going to take roughly two days, most probably, to kill them. Uh, plus, they're going to bite the person tonight. So if we can collect as many as we can, it's less for them to get bit. To carry out his plan, Pete has to dismantle the bed piece by piece. In Leicester, council property manager Alex has called in the cavalry. Leading the charge, extreme cleaners Dave and Graham. Oh, it's bad, isn't it, mate? Oh, it smells a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, we've got the dreaded old milk again. Oh, we've got the milk again? Yeah. That's your favourite, isn't it? Brilliant. We'll tackle that first, then. Decision made. Because of the smell, shifting the milk has to be the priority. It's just curdled up, and it? it stinks. In Graham's view, milk, good old milk, can be awful. I think this is probably the worst smell out of all the things that we do come across. It smells like sick, stronger. Man, that is bad. I can get out of here. I can feel that on my stomach now, like curdling a bit, but I'm going to fight it. One way or another, I'm not going to throw up, I'm not going to give you that satisfaction, no way. <laughs> of course it's a priority, but does it have to be dealt with straight away? So should we go and get in the uh, living room instead of doing air day? You had enough of it already. Not the sins of the fathers, the sins of last night, perhaps. Oh, does the smell get into you? Well, I went out last night. Did you? Yeah, it ain't good. Is it bringing it up? Just a bit. <laughs> now the milk war is over, Graham can open a fresh front in the living room. Well, at least don't stink in here so much anyway, so we'll open the window anyway. I like the smell of rain. Better it's than milk, fresh. isn't it? If your job is clearing houses, you can't be too narrow-minded. There's always the possibility of finding something <laughs> interesting. Bit of a porno, man. Did you want that, Dave? No, I didn't want that, thank you. <laughs> Oh, look, just found these, Dave, look. What you found? <laughs> wow. Sure. No messing about there, is there? Sharp as well. What are we going to have to do with them, then? Take them down to the gaffer and find out how we dispose of these, because it's not the sort of thing you can just take down the tip, really, is it? Hey, up, samurai's gowns here, look. Do you think he was a bit of a weirdo? Or do you reckon he did, like, martial arts? I won't have to be in here if he comes back. <laughs> it may not be Graham's style, but worth a try? Wow. Perfect, mate. Is that good? Yeah, I reckon that's the part. <laughs> he may have kept himself busy, but he still had time for a smoke. <laughs> Found yeah, a packet of fags here, Dave, look. Bit of a ch chain smoker, I think. And just when it looked as if all the secrets had been discovered, there was this. Oh, it's a needle. A needle. I've got to take it a bit more serious now. I've got to be careful. That's brilliant, though, isn't it? That's spoiled me fun now. I've just got to be a bit more careful now. Our boys have seen it all. Scary? Well, yes. Oh! <laughs> As we've seen in these programmes, a career as an environmental enforcement officer requires many skills and total dedication. In Grimsby, enforcement officer John Waite has a deserved reputation for zero tolerance. Go away. He's sheriff of Grimsby, and he rather likes the idea of being more John Wayne than John Waite. <laughs> Today, John has brought his posse to remove some unsightly wagons from a small homestead. Way out west, this kind of thing's been going on for years. There's been a number of warnings about the state of the outside of the property. Some of these vehicles have been here for some 20 years or more. Uh, what we're here for today is to execute a warrant. He failed to comply with what was required, and that was to remove the vehicles. Unfortunately, it's not happened, so we are here, and as you can see, we are taking the vehicles. But homeowner George doesn't quite see this as a stirring tale of the Wild West. I don't agree with it. I think it's all wrong. I can't see as anything as harmful to anybody there. I've been dealt a dumb blow because there might be old vans, but they're all repairable. 
They could have given me another day and given me a chance and there'd been no need for any of this. The warrant clearly states we have to move the vehicles. So if John decides a shootout would not be appropriate. It's time, he thinks, for a bit of diplomacy. Coming up, Dave and Graham go all out on the kitchen and bathroom. It's high noon at George's homestead, and Pete reads the last rites to the bedbugs. Throughout the country, an army of professionals are continuing to dedicate their daily lives to waging war on the nation's grime. In Leicester, extreme cleaners Dave and Graham are making slow progress in clearing the council flat. And Graham is looking for a little distraction. Any good? As they clear the big items, more horrors are revealed. I think you like this old smoke, don't you? Unbelievable. Disgusting, eh? Any sympathy they might have had for the tenant soon disappears. Something must just trigger them. Just to wake up and think to yourself, I sit now, I can't be arsed. But it's sad, no. It's the way it shows life, I think. Dave and Graham have worked together as a close team for years, but this flat is really testing their patience. Their thoughts turn to what it might be like if they had more help. If anyone did ever come and work with us, we'd want them to have, like I say, a strong stomach and just get stuck in, basically, and work as a team. It's what you make of it. If you come in with the attitude like, I don't want to do that, go home. Yeah. We don't need people like you, go away. Yeah. We can get on with it ourselves. Once the furniture has been removed, the living room looks a lot better. Now they can focus their attention on the bathroom. It's pretty nice, doesn't it? Nice fish tank. Looks like he's been keeping fish in there, I'd say. People used to put pike in baths and that, like, to wash them out, like, you know, clean all the earth taste and that. But I've not heard of it done, like, since my old grandma-type days and that, like. Uh, that's well strange, that is. They've cleared the rubbish from the bathroom, but perhaps the bath can wait. Oh, let's go on, Dave. A long day. Tomorrow, that'll be the start of the deep clean. In Dagenham, pest controller Pete is battling the bed bugs. He's dismantled the bed so he can kill as many of the blighters as possible before he fumigates. Sticky tape is the secret weapon. I'm doing this going along and seeing the ones I can literally physically see. He has to be vigilant. It's the tiny ones that pose the biggest problem. The ones which are small are the ones basically have not fed on you and due for a feed. They can actually take seven times their own body weight of blood a night. A satisfyingly sticky end. Pete can now nip downstairs and get the insecticide to finish them all off. What we're going to do is quickly go for a spray now, and hopefully that solves his problem. A breath of air and a bit of sunshine. I've been in the Seychelles, actually. As you can see the colour, it's nice and brown. With sunnier climes brought to mind, Pete returns to the bedroom and spots a possible source of the infestation. They may have brought more back from their holidays than they bargained for. This is always what I check. I asked anyone if they go on holiday, they all turn around and say, no, no, no. It's been Dubai. Generally, they all come abroad on the luggage. And then they just stay in the fold or they put them up in the clothes, they fold their clothes up, they pull it in the suitcase, and then they brought them in. Snug in his protective suit and mask, Pete can now fumigate the whole room with insecticide, which will remain active for some weeks. The room will be safe once the insecticide has dried. After spraying the whole room, Pete declares victory over the bed bugs. That's Bella. No, I'm happy with that. But he'll be back in three weeks' time to check that they really have been defeated. In Grimsby, Enforcement Officer John, that's to say the Sheriff of Grimsby, has instructed his posse to bring some order to the land belonging to the homeowner, George. He's failed to listen to the complaints of his neighbours or the council's warnings to clear the place. He's resisted, and he's not going to give up entirely without a fight. 
feel like kicking a man when he's down, is there? No, I don't intend to do that. Oh, you, yeah, you know yeah, that we'll offer you every help yes, and assistance that we can. Yeah. We've had promises over the years and they've never been kept to, you know. So if I wanted to give you the benefit of the doubt, which I can't, there's nothing to say that in two or three days' time we're not back here revisiting the same situations. The various notices have been served on you and this has now reached a point where it can no longer right. carry on. George is now deep into his anecdotage. A lot of it are tools. I mean, some of this stuff I've had since I, since I left school. It's, it's me, I'll be. It's like people go out drinking, I don't drink. People gamble, people go to football matches. It doesn't interest me. I like to tinker. I'm a tinker. It's my train set. John may have a reputation for being tough, but he also understands how his actions can affect people. What we want to do is, is not only please the masses, which I'm sure we're doing in this case, but it's the individual themselves. I mean, we are talking about an elderly gentleman here. Um, by doing what we've done today, in many respects, we have disrupted his life, albeit for the right reasons and lawful reasons. Um, but he is at least now seeing that it couldn't continue. Uh, and the private conversation I've just had would indicate that, and he really is a much happier person and glad that it's out of sight and out of his way. It's something he no longer has to worry about. John has agreed that George can take back some of the smaller items from the council as long as he stores them out of sight. Diplomacy is working. Now we've got something sorted and I know that I can get the stuff back mm, when I want it back. John even offers to help out with the garden. Well, we're getting there. Once we've completed this bit, we'll come back tomorrow and uh, help George do his garden. Get it a bit tidier for him, weed it, make him proud of it. But that's not an idea that appeals to George. I don't like garden. I'd sooner have it concrete. George's property now looks fairly normal, so John can turn his attention to a neighbour's garden. So then two are coming as well? Yeah, right? yeah, because that's... Um, right. Um, They're George's, but somehow they found their way into his neighbour's garden. OK. It's been a better day than John expected. Peace, not war. Pretty good. It's nice that uh, George has finally accepted and uh, seems to be a much happier man than when we first saw him uh, a few hours ago. And I would think his neighbour's going to be pretty pleased that uh, he's going to get part of this garden back again. Right. Right, George. Just... And no hard feelings. All right. Go on, give me that shake. Cheers, mate. Right. Thank you. All right. In Leicester, Dave and Graham have returned the flat for the deep clean. They've already transformed the bedroom and are putting the finishing touches to the living room. Graham seems in good spirits and he's keen to reveal the reason. I just had two guys just to finish the arm off. Everybody's got tattoos on this firm. If you've not got them, you will have them. We've just got the worst two rooms to go out. the bathroom and the kitchen. Uh, we're going to leave them to last and fight them. Flip the kitchen next in there, because that's the worst one, I think. Yeah. The living room is finished, so now they've got to get stuck into the rest of the flat. And it's not looking good. I think we missed a lot out of the cupboard. Joking. What we going there, then? Oh, milk again. Oh, terrific. That's what that smell is, mm. then, isn't it? Oh, dear. Oh, brilliant. We've got flies in here. Look at them all coming out. Absolutely. I bet there's maggots in the corner. Yeah. When you move it. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> oh, it stinks that does. <laughs> it's odd because you, you can wear masks, but eventually the smell will end up getting in the mask and then it just stays there. So, if anything, just, just face it. Just face the smell if you can. Breathe through your mouth. And breathe out through your nose, but don't breathe it in through your nose just when you smell it. While Graham tackles the cupboard, Dave can concentrate on the sink. Let's get on my nerves sometimes, this job. I have to grip my teeth while I'm at work, and then when I get, when I get home, just go down to the gym and just release it there. Dave often relaxes by playing football. It gets some of the anger out of his system, but he feels it's not quite enough. Got to start training next week for cage fighting. Something I've always thought about doing, but I've got a mate who does it, so I went down and seen him, and I said, "Yeah, come along." So I'm going to take it up. Start next week and uh, see how it goes. I've got a short fuse, so I'll just, just to release some anger, really. Check it out on, on people <laughs> in, the, in the ring, <laughs> not on the streets. <laughs> of course, Dave needs a stage name, and Graham's got an idea. Kitchen sink, Dave. <laughs> Set your sinking and whack them with it, Dave. <laughs> Make sure you clean it first, though. 
The kitchen soon looks a lot better. Alex is due back to check on their work, but there's time to have a go at the bathroom and its fish pond. There's no sign of him having a bath because it, it was full of uh, water to keep fish in it. Definitely alga. He's either brought it from a pet shop or something like that to put his fish in, in the bath, or as he's gone fishing, he's got it from there. The bath may look unpleasant, but it's quite easy to clean, certainly at least compared with the loo. It's the uh, line scale. I need a jackhammer. It's stinking a bit now. It is time for Big Bertha. Can't clean it with that. <laughs> the old gem is doing the job. That is breaking and entering, eh? Make sure you don't go too hard with it, because you'll end up through the bottom. Alex returns to inspect the property. While he looks round, Graham and Dave can give the bathroom a final once-over. Oh, it's, it's so much better, isn't it? All the milk's gone. Um, it's still got a slight lingering smell of uh, mouldy milk, but it's definitely more bearable now anyway, so at least I could probably spend more than five minutes in it. But even after all their work, the kitchen doesn't pass muster. You can't let anyone use this kitchen, so we'll have to rip this entire kitchen out and put a new one in. Kitchens and bathrooms usually end up being replaced because the council refurbishment team find it difficult to bring them up to scratch. You can't expect our lads to work in an de environment that hasn't been desanitised, basically. This is the sort of thing you want to be giving them. In the nick of time, the boys have finished the bathroom and Alex gives them a green light. Well done, lads. Cheers. Thank you very much, Ted. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. It's a dirty job, well done. Since the filming of the show, Pete celebrates a triumph in his battle against the bugs. Alex has people queuing up to rent the one-bed flat, and George's property now looks shipshape. 